therefore, Narada said, This infinite that you have described, O revered sir, wherein does that rest? Sanat Kumara answered, In its own majesty. That is, the infinite rests in its own majesty, greatness, splendor. This is the answer for you, if you wish to know the resting place of the infinite in some cases, to satisfy your intellectual curiosity. If, however, you wish to know the real truth, then the answer is that the infinite does not rest ever upon majesty. It is without a resting place, without a substratum, anywhere at all. In the world, what they call majesty is cows and horses, elephants and gold, slaves and wives, lands and houses. I do not say this, he said, as in that case one thing would rest upon another. What I do say is this, what follows. Bhashya. Question. If the infinite rests upon its own majesty, then why is it said that it does not rest upon anything? Answer. Listen. In this world, what they call majesty is cows, horses, and the rest. The compound in Go Ashvam is made up of Gavaha and Ashvaha, and it is copulative and hence in the singular number. It is well known everywhere that things like cows and horses make up majesty, greatness. And when a person like Chaitra depends and rests upon that majesty, he becomes great, majestic. But I do not say this. It is not my opinion that the infinite rests on anything other than itself, like Chaitra. And the reason given for this is as in that case one thing would rest upon another. This has to be connected into the present sentence. What I do say is this, Saeva, etc., etc., following text. That itself is below, that above, that behind, that before, that to the right, that to the left. That itself is all this. Next follows the teaching through the notion of I. I itself is below, I above, I behind, I before, I to the right, I to the left. The I is all this. Bhashya. It is explained why the infinite is not based upon anything. Because it is the infinite itself which is below, and there is nothing else apart from it which is below it upon which it would rest. Similarly, it is above, etc., etc., as above. If there existed something apart from the infinite, then alone could the infinite rest upon something else. As a matter of fact, however, there is nothing apart from the infinite. The infinite itself is all. Hence, it follows that the infinite does not rest upon anything. In view of the assertion, wherein one sees nothing else, which implies the idea of container and contained, and the present assertion, that is below, which appears to refer to something not before the eyes of the speaker and is something different, it would give rise to the idea in someone's mind that the infinite is something different from the perceiving, the living self. In order to preclude the possibility of such an idea arising, there follows the teaching through the notion of I, which shows that the infinite is non-different from the perceiver, and it is the infinite itself which is spoken of as I being below, etc., etc. Now follows the teaching through self. The self itself is below, 
the self above, the self behind, the self before, the self to the right, the self to the left. The self is all this. One who sees thus, reflects thus, and understands thus, loves the self, revels with the self, enjoys the company of the self, and rejoices in the self. He becomes the self-sovereign, or king of heaven. He becomes free to do what he pleases in all regions, while those that know otherwise than this are ruled by others and live in perishable regions, and they are not free to do what they please in all regions. Bhashya People lacking in discrimination speak of the aggregate of the body and other things, sense organs, etc., etc., as I. In order to set aside this notion, that the notion of I through which the infinite has been explained refers to the body, now follows the teaching through self, which is really what the notion of I stands for. That is, the infinite is now going to be described through the self itself, in the form of pure being. It is the self itself that is all, everywhere. The wise man who sees this one, unborn, all-pervading, like Akash, full without a second, and having seen it, reflects upon it and understands it, he comes to love self. That is, has all his love, affection, joy centered in the self. So also he revels with the self. Love, rati, stands for what is carried on which the body alone. While real krida stands for what is carried on through external means entirely. As is clear from the use of the root krida, to revel, which is used in the world in connection with one's wives and friends. It is not so for the wise man. For him, both these, love and reveling, are brought about by his knowledge of the self. The enjoyment of company is pleasure due to the companionship of two persons. This also, for the wise, is independent of duality the second person. Similarly, he rejoices in the self. For the ignorant, their rejoicing due to sound and other objects, not so for the wise, for whom all rejoicing at all times and in all ways is due to the self alone. It is not due to such agencies as the body, the physical life and experiences, and is entirely independent of all external things. The knowing man who is described becomes the self-sovereign even while he is still alive, and also when his body dies, he becomes the self-sovereign or king of heaven. And inasmuch as he becomes all this, he becomes free to do as he pleases in all regions. The freedom to act as he pleases that has been spoken of in connection with the spirit and other stages has been with reference to the restricted spheres specially mentioned therein, and the fact of being subject to the rule of others was a logical implication from the fact that there were still higher degrees of freedom, etc. While what is done in the present context is that reference is made to the freedom of action and self-sovereignty, as suggested by the circumstances of the case, and then the cessation of those restricted grades of freedom, etc., is stressed by means of such expression as, he becomes the self-sovereign. While those that know otherwise than this, that is, who entertain notions contrary to the one herein declared, or who have not rightly understood the view herein propounded, are ruled by others, that is, one such as have other persons for their ruler and also live in perishable regions. We have already explained that notions of diversity appertain to the finite, 
and the finite is mortal. Hence, it follows that those who hold to the idea of duality, diversity, live in perishable regions, in accordance with the character of their own ideas. And for this same reason, they are not free to do as they please in all regions.